Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. Thank you for joining me. Today I am going to change the sandpaper on my shopsmith and bring you along with me. A shopsmith drum sander? They didn't make one, but I did. Yes, homemade drum sander. And that's not your everyday drum either. It is actually a cardboard drum. Not an aluminum drum with fancy little wedge deals on the side or anything like that. No hook and loop sandpaper either. This is PSA and a little bit of Super 77. I'll bring you through how I change the paper, tune the drum, and thickness a couple cutting boards. Yes, right here. This is my shop smith with my homemade drum sander. This really is the workhorse of my shop. A total investment of about 150 bucks. And this thing has a capacity to thickness from about a half an inch all the way up to about three and a half inches. And with a few modifications, it could do more. Now, if you have a commercial unit, obviously you might have to buy special paper and there's a certain type of clamping mechanism or system, either hook and loop sandpaper or sometimes there's a wedge on each end of the drum. This video may not apply to you, but if you're looking to build a drum sander or a thicknesser, or maybe you want to upgrade your own homemade machine, this video probably is for you. This is going to give you some ideas of how I made mine. Total proof of concept, guys. Uh, I expect to rebuild this at some point but I just haven't needed to. I put probably a thousand miles on the thing and the bicycle hub has not exploded yet. So stick with me and we'll get started. I get this sandpaper, it's on Amazon. It's actually four and a half inches wide. It's 30 feet long also. So that gives me about 10 cycles of paper on this drum for about 25 bucks. A Little bit more about the unit. I built the dust collection in the last video. It's just a piece of eighth inch Lexan that I've added a PVC tube on, a PVC elbow, heated it up so it would fit my exhaust or my uh, intake to my shop vac. A couple little wooden widgets to secure it to the top of the shop. Smith is really not at all secured except for around this area right here. And as you noticed, uh, a pair of my old flannel pajamas. What this has done is actually increased the suction and helped uh, eliminate a lot of the ambient dust floating around in the air. I do have my air filtration unit that does help with a lot of that. And the gap on the other side of my dust collection is actually pretty narrow. It just allows the cutting board to slide through. First thing I really need to do is release the quill on my shop smith. That's really what's holding the drum together and allowing putting pressure on my tailstock over here. Okay, what you've seen is the quill started to release. I'll just pop it out. Plywood homemade hub right there. And the other end is a very noisy bicycle bay. Obviously it needs a little lube. I think maybe I'll put a little grease fitting in there. Uh, it's nice and tight. It hasn't exploded. What we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this old paper, peel it off this cardboard drum. Now I right here, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking that I'm peeling away some of my drum. Well, you're right. I am peeling some of it away, but Here's where the beauty of having a cardboard drum is. I'm actually going to tune this drum. I'm gonna reinstall it back on my drum sander. And I'll just take my tuning block. I have a piece of hardwood, it's about an inch thick, about an inch wide and about six inches long. It has some of that 80 grit on it. I'll get it adjusted to where it's just barely touching the drum, flip the baby on, and I'll start to tune my drum. What I'm doing is I'm really taking off any of the high spots, trying to match some of the low spots. I 
and I'm not really even taking off a lot of the material on the drum. I may be only taking 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch each time I tune the drum. Even if there is some low spots, that sandpaper has a pretty thick backing. It's pretty forgiving. My two previous drums that I retired, I tuned them approximately 10 times. And I don't think I was really even close to a danger point of the drum collapsing or getting too thin. Next step is uh, laying out how much I am going to need. It's pretty convenient that this cardboard tube has some lines in it where it was rolled and laminated and the sandpaper lines up really, really good. So it gives me a pretty good direction. I'll start right at the edge. Basically, loosely wrap this so I can get my length. These are pressure sensitive adhesive, so the harder you press, the tighter it gets, or the more adhesive it gets. And the first part's the most important. I made one revolution, but I've left myself oh about a quarter inch gaps. So what I what I need to do is adjust my paper. In the past, I've had the experience of this last tag end kind of coming loose. The PSA doesn't stick the greatest at the end. So what I'll do, put a little spring clamp on the end. A little bit of Super 77. I let it sit maybe about 10 minutes so it gets nice and sticky. The last thing to do is just uh, secure these last edges and do a final trim. Imagine we should blow some of the crud out of there and spray some grease in it. And someday it will replace that. So thanks for coming along guys. I hope you learned something about my homemade shop, Smith Drum Sander, uh, where maybe you can source some paper, where and what types of materials you could source for your own homemade drum. Remember guys, this drum is about 20 inches wide and it's about a quarter inch wall thickness, approximately three inches in diameter. Use what you got, not what you ain't. I really have proven that an cardboard drum can take some of the abuse of a drum sander and hold up. I was not sure it was going to be strong enough, but it certainly is. 
I also get quite a few uses out of each drum. Uh, I can probably change the sandpaper oh, five to ten times and tune it a few times within that before I have to exchange drums. I've only now put my third drum on this sander and I've had this machine for a couple years now so I have a good supply of that. Um, be inspired. Try and make your own tools. Use what you have. This was a $150 shopsmith and this is what I turned it into. I don't use it as a table saw. I don't use it as a drill press. I don't use it as anything else. It's my power head for my drum sander. So I see lathes used sometimes on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Those are perfect little platforms that you can try and build a thickness or a drum sander for your needs. Maybe you're a luthier and make guitars, uh, banjos, cigar box guitars. This is perfect. Uh, you're not thicknessing that great big stock. You're not. I, I don't really even need to thickness things that are above three inches thick. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video, found some value out of it. I'd like to inspire each and every one of you. If you don't have the perfect situation, you don't have all the tools, and you don't have all the fancy tools, get out of your shop and make some sawdust.